It's the most anticipated race in the 2022 racing season. It's taken over two and a half years to put together, and it's time to go racing. Here we go, NASCAR on dirt. It's been three years in the making. Bring Canada's premier stock car series and put them on dirt. For the first time ever, Canada's NASCAR division comes to the 3 eighths of a mile Oshwegan Speedway. This series has raced as far west as British Columbia and as far east as Newfoundland on short tracks to road courses to street circuits. Now, it's time to get dirty. From the Six Nations of the Grand River, this is the 10th race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series. TSN brings you the Pinty's 100 from Ush Weekend Speedway. It was 25 years ago that Glenn Styers decided to build a racetrack in his backyard with big dreams and a lot of hard work. Comes one of the best dirt tracks in North America. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Clinton Jeffrey is trackside for the team here today. And Adam, you must be giddy to see how the last few days have played out leading up to this event. I absolutely am, Dave. These are my stomping grounds, a racetrack I work at every Friday night. And to be able to introduce it to all of our fans, you are in for some phenomenal racing. This racetrack, 10 to 12 lanes wide of hard packed clay. It's a world renowned racing surface, and we're going to see why tonight. These drivers have a lot of room to work with out there. And the storylines will vary over the course of the event and over the course of the rest of the season. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Just four events remain two of those on road courses at Circuit ICAR and CTMP of course the one here on the dirt and then we'll finish off the season on the asphalt oval at Delaware Speedway DJ Kennington comes into this one tops in the point standings but only with a cushion of four markers and of course there's extra variables at play here today Dave the biggest variable in this race is cash the biggest posted purse in the history of the NASCAR Pinty Series. This race pays $25,000 to win. And when you put up that kind of money, the drivers come from near and far. Yeah, big money brings big names. NASCAR legend Ken Schrader is in today's event. Truck Series standout and Canadian star Stuart Friesen is also entered in this one. And then you have local stars, Aaron Turkey and Dave Bailey could be a dark horse here today. Dave Bailey isn't a household name for race fans across the country, but if you're a dirt racing fan in Ontario, you know the name. More than 100 wins in th Thunderstock action around the province. He's the winningest driver with fenders at a dirt track the province has ever seen, and he was hand-picked by team owners Dave Jacobs, Randy Slack, and Bobby Slack to drive the number 36 car tonight. Of course, Aaron Turkey, quick in timed practice, picking up a little bit of cash in that Larry Jack and prepared number 99 so we'll keep an eye on that driver as well and with more on today's event let's send it down to clinton jeffrey a man who must be relieved to finally see this event come to fruition clinton Thanks, Adam. No lie, it's been an anticipated event like no other here. We've waited so long to get this event going through the pandemic and everything else. It's amazing. What's the big difference today? The dirt here. This clay is going to change throughout these 100 laps. Still soft and smooth like plasticine right now, but when we get into this race, it's going to turn hard like concrete. These guys are going to see this change throughout the night, and the drivers that can make the changes to deal with it on the brakes are the ones who are going to come out at the end. You know, it was important to Clinton Jeffrey and Glenn Styers and NASCAR to run this race in stages. The drivers have two opportunities to make adjustments on or around lap 25, on or around lap 50, and then it'll be green flag to the end to lap 100. Driver introductions have been made. They're getting belted in right now. Let's set it down trackside for tonight's command. I've got a very special gentleman here, Adam Eggerter, a big fan. Adam, are you ready? Yeah. All right, we need to hear those words loud and proud. Give it to us, buddy. Driver, start, start your engine. engine. The field comes to life. We're going to have some looks from onboard Stuart Friesen, as well as the fastest driver from last night, Aaron Turkey. Drivers wondering what it's going to be like to race 100 laps on dirt. We're about to find out. The 10th race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty's season on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. Buy quick.
Crickwick, the world's number one fire starter. By Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. As most of our special events here at Ashwikin Speedway are started, the Six Nations Smoke Dancers lead the way. And look at this, a four-wide salute to the fans in NASCAR. This is something you often see in World of Outlaws sprint cars and late models. But let's take a look at our starting grid here today. Mark Antoine Cameron on pole. DJ Kennington will start alongside. Row number two has Ken Schrader and Gary Clute in the 59. Back to the third row, Trayton Lapsovich in the 20 and Stuart Friesen behind the wheel of the 22. In row four, it's Alex Tagliani and Andrew Ranger. Let's look back to row number five, and that's where we find the number nine of Brandon Watson. And the 64, we say hello to Jake Sheridan making his first start. Michael Gowdy is in the 38. Dave Bailey drives the 36, two first-timers in the Pinty Series. Larry Jackson behind the wheel of the 84, and local standout Aaron Turkey in the 99. Sam Fellows in the 98. The 47 is LP Dumoulin. We look back to row number nine. That's where we find Kevin Lacroix. He has a long way to go today. And Brian Cathcart in the 71. Row 10, Raphael Lassard in the 8. Glenn Styers. It's his backyard, his playground in the 0. In the 11th row, it's Dexter Stacy in the 92. And the 1 of J.P. Bergeron. And then rounding out the field, it's Wallace Stacy in the 66. And Trevor Monaghan in the 4. Pace truck pulls in. We are getting set. The first segment tonight 25 laps overall race distance 100 for the pinties 100 there's cash on the line it's taken a few years to get here but green flag is out on the pinties 100. mark antoine cameron will lead it into turn number one using the high side you see ken schrader ducking down low and this is the beauty of this facility so many lines to choose from there's a lot of usable racetrack out here. Early on, I expect the top of the track is where most of the drivers will gravitate to. There's a lot of banking up there. And on a dirt track, that's where you're gonna find the grip. There you can see it's a three-car train. That's a battle for second spot. Flute, Kennington, and Friesen. Three back to the 22. Oh, there's a little bump already. As <laughs> you can see the effects as Clute takes a little slide on the exit of four. And you know, that's not to rattle somebody's cage, it's these drivers. You have to use throttle to help the car rotate. So even if there's someone in front of you, if you need the back end to come around, you're gonna pump the throttle a little bit. That's not DJ Kennington style, not on lap two. There you can see Andrew Ranger comes from a lineage of dirt racers. And Jake Sheridan behind the wheel of the 64. He's done really well in the heat races and practice earlier on today. He showed great speed in the early going. His brother Nick is a familiar face to you. His brother Nick is a champion here in sprint cars. And of course, their father, Ron Sheridan, was a standout in the Cascar days, but more particularly to Delaware Speedway. This is his first start in a NASCAR Pinty Series car. His first start on dirt, too. And the driver who was supposed to be in that seat was Christopher Bell. And Bell had some travel complications, wasn't able to make it up here. So on basically 24 hours notice, Jake Sheridan behind the wheel with a big opportunity to drive that 64 machine. You can see the 17, the super clean colors for DJ Kennington. Do you remember the last time the 17 was purple? It, it's been 10 years if I remember right and I think it was in your stomping grounds. <laughs> Very Speedway 2012. You're absolutely right. That car, unfortunately for DJ, he didn't have the finish he wanted. It came home in a box realistically and I believe he said at that point, he's like I will never drive another purple car. Funny. Super clean is needed today because of the dirt. So it's a it's a fitting sponsor for today. Stuart Friesen testing the waters. These drivers will not see full throttle today. Inside, he's there down the bottom. Inside at the bottom. Inside tight. That's Ken Katu, the spotter for the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich dicing with the 22 
which was run earlier this year in Saskatoon by Kyle Steckler, who's now serving as crew chief on that car here today. Famous number in the NASCAR Pinty Series for sure. And Stuart Friesen is exploring up there, trying some different lines as we see Jake Sheridan alongside Andrew Ranger. You said it, the outside line seems to be the best one so far. Sheridan is finding a little bit of grip in that Leland. IHL number 64 as he dives underneath the GM Pie number 27 of Andrew Ranger. Simply put, what you see them doing on the outside, as we said, they are not going to get to full throttle. I mean, it is a dance. Let's have a listen. Just a little bit of throttle gets that car sideways. So the reason they run up the top of the banking is when you come off the corner, you're basically driving downhill. That's the goal, is to get the car pointed down the straightaway and use gravity as your friend. Chasing the APC number three of Ken Schrader. Schrader knows how to get around this place on dirt. He's done it a few times in a UMP. Late model, we got a spin. Yeah, that's in turn number two. Car goes around and lots of room. Dexter Stacy in the Bullies Truck Stop 92 goes around. He comes to a stop. We'll see the first caution. As he couldn't find the opening to get down into traffic, everybody was really spread out. Let's have another look. Fetted a little bit too much gas pedal and couldn't hang on to the back end. Didn't hit anything, but it's worth noting tonight, Dave, yellow flag laps don't count. So Dexter Stacy did not lose a lap there in that spin. So he'll tag on to the tail of the field as the leaders line up side by side. Double file restarts. Clute is on the inside. Mark Antoine Cameron choosing it. Outside, so they're going too low. Up high, and a few up down low, you're good. Keep taking, keep taking up three on the bottom. Wow, four wide. Four yeah. wide, the NASCAR Pinty Series, and they're still at it now, three wide, two rows deep. Lots of room. They stack out four wide right there with Jake Sheridan giving a push to Stuart Friesen. But even at four wide, there's lots of room. Get into the corner, everybody, everybody has to make a different decision, but it can be done. See that train right down along the blocks on the inside of these turns. Stuart Fries and Jake Sheridan and the 18 of Alex Tangling, and he's starting to move up. So much patience these drivers have to show getting up on the gas. DJ Kennington is in a tough spot right now. He's in the shiny part of the racetrack. It is shiny because all of the tires have been spinning on it. They're basically polishing the clay. At the extreme outside and the extreme inside, you see where it's like a dull brown instead of a shiny. That's where the grip is. Three down ball here. That's right. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Spotters are busy today. There's cars all over the place. And three down low is something that would be unbelievable to hear on some of the other tracks we race on. But then you see it here and it's just sort of become normal. It's normal for these teams to have multiple people on radios around the racetrack, especially on road courses, but they each only have one official spotter in the spotters area. From what I've been told, some of these teams have an extra person on a radio. Their only job is to watch everybody else, see who's making up time and how they're doing it. See, Stuart Friesen has now abandoned that inside line. He's moved up to the top but trying for a run underneath that super clean number 17 of DJ Kennington. Stuart Friesen has been in more of these dirt races than anybody else with his experience in the NASCAR trucks. Remember, he tested a cup car as well on dirt as a tire test as the field continues to chase the GM Pie number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron comfortably out in front at this point. What Friesen knows from his experience, however, is to explore the racetrack. He's learning a lot. Of all the drivers out there, he's running more different lanes than anybody else. It may not matter right now, but come the end of the race, it'll be knowledge he can have in the bank. On board, watch his eyes. Quick check of the mirror. You're out of the gas for so long, trying to get the car to set 
and then get rotated and then you get back on the gas but again it is it's almost like ice racing for some of these drivers who haven't raced on dirt before they're heavy heavy race cars with a lot of horsepower and this particular general tire they brought to the track is a really hard rubber compound so they're not getting a lot of grip from the rubber but the good news is as we watch kevin lacroix and larry jackson side by side tire wear is not going to be an issue tonight Jackson in the O'Neill Electric number 84 mentioned that he had about 50 people from O'Neill in the grandstands here today and he's given them a pretty good show. I understand they're opening a new location in Cambridge. They brought a bunch of people down. What a, what a great way to kick things off if you've got some new employees and new partners and just ahead of them is Dave Bailey in the Transaxle 36. Right on board, Aaron Turkey in the 99 in a car prepared by Larry Jackson. Turkey was quick in the timed practice, as we mentioned off the top of the show, winning a check for, you, you never win practice, but he actually won practice and won money. 1,500 bucks, Not I mean, bad. that's nothing to shake a stick at. Coming up on the break, it'll be on or around lap 25. And as we get that opportunity, a huge shout out to Glenn Styers and the Styers family. Well, what a venue they've got. What a crowd they've brought in. Just an amazing, amazing event. Fireworks before the event even started here today. So they are really rolling out the red carpet for the NASCAR Pinty Series here at Oshweekin Speedways. You see Trayton Lapsovich starting to make some moves now. Battling for third with Gary Clute in the 59. So we should explain the break, how it works. Once the yellow comes out, the field will be frozen. You don't have to go to the pits. If you go to the pits, you lose your track position. If you don't, you stay where you're running. So a little bit of strategy comes into play as well. Another extra variable to watch over the course of this event. But you see Cameron, who is out to about a second and a half lead, has seen that lead start to disappear. It's now about half that as Ken Schrader has started to turn up the wick. He didn't even come close to lap traffic. What concerns me right now for Cameron, he hasn't had to venture away from his line as we ride with the great Ken Schrader, and the yellow flag has been displayed. Not for an issue on track. This is the caution for the first segment break with 27 laps in the book. So this will give the teams an opportunity to chat with their drivers. Do you want a pit? Do you want something different? Can we make some changes? Of everyone who comes into the pits, they'll go back out in the same order, but at the back of the pack. But right now, Clinton Jeffrey is back there. He's on top of things. Andrew Ranger pulls it in the pits, as does Brandon Watson and a few other machines here. Here in the Ranger pit, they're going to make a spring rubber adjustment in the front and a track bar adjustment on the back. Brandon Watson also in here going to work on the number nine. You can see they do have a little bit of time. It's a two-minute time pit stop, so they bring the field stopped on the front straightaway. When we return, the cars will be rolling. We'll be going back to green here in the Pinty's 100. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN and the Pinty's 100, the first time ever the NASCAR Pinty Series has been racing on dirt. The first segment is in the books. Mark Antoine Cameron starting alongside the three of Ken Schrader for this restart. Outside, outside. Still out there. Outside there, 64 looking low. Outside, outside, outside. There's a lot to be said by these spotters. What do you do? Like they'll say when you're in the middle of a three wide, but I don't know what the code is for four wide. And you can see these cars do have their Lexan windshields in, but because the track is so packed in, you don't have a lot of that dirt being kicked up and, and scattering across that windshield. You saw bits of it, but not a lot of it. Some of the challenges NASCAR has encountered, whether it's at Eldora or Knoxville or Bristol, is mud getting clogged up in the air intakes to the radiator and visibility on the windshield. But as you can see here at Oshwegan, it doesn't create an awful lot of mud. In fact, none. Even dust isn't a big problem, but I'll let you in on a little secret. There was cloud cover today. Cloud cover is the best friend of someone who's trying to prepare a dirt track, something we've never done before. I'm going to shout out Zigger Van Tile, the fellow who is preparing the track this year. He has come back after some absence, and it has been beautiful. 
Beautiful is the race for the lead. DJ Kennington trying to find some grip down low. He was up there battling with the 96, but just like that, you slide back, and now the 17 is in fourth. I can't help but listen, but you can hear they're getting a little bit more aggressive on the throttle, being able to roll into it. These drivers are so good. They learn as they go. And I would imagine some of them were watching the sprint cars earlier on just to get a feel for what kind of lines you can run. There are not many similarities there. You look at the top screen, you'll see the eight, the 18, two drivers that took part in the Chevrolet Urban Challenge, Raphael Lassard and Alex Tagliani. As a matter of fact, in that Urban Challenge, Lassard had the outsider on his car because they consider him an asphalt driver. So here he's taking that dirt knowledge and putting it to good use. Also taking part in that was Mark Antoine Cameron in the 96. Uh, Dexter Stacy took part. J.P. Bergeron, driver of the one machine also. Look at Stuart Friesen now getting hungry for the lead. That Mr. Transmission car. Good to see a new sponsor. The trouble in turn number four, Glenn Styers in the zero machine. There you can see him stuck up in the outside groove as he tries to get moving. The tire's spinning, he finally does. No caution, we stay green. Chris Wright, the race director tonight, letting these drivers have at it. And really, he's probably doing them a favor. Let's have a look at this again. was about as lazy a spin as you can get for Glenn Styers. Now we'll ride on board with Dexter Stacy as he has to decide which way he wants to go. He goes up the racetrack. A couple drivers got close there, but again, we stay green. No caution in this battle between the 74, the 36, and the 84 is still tight. It has been for the last almost 10 laps. Well, Kevin Lacroix always aggressive. Andrew Ranger coming back through the pack. You take the most aggressive driver in the NASCAR Pinty Series and put him up alongside the best fender dirt car driver this province has to offer in Dave Bailey. These two could have some epic battles. Well, Lacroix actually jumped the start in his heat. That's why he had to start so far back in this race as the leaders working on lap traffic and it's Trayton Lapsovich who's working on the leader in the FBM 20 moves to the inside. Lapsovich looking for top spot. Will we have a new leader? Our first lead change on dirt potentially. It's a much shorter distance to go to the bottom of the racetrack, but you just can't get back to the throttle and carry as much momentum. So Cameron to the inside and Dexter Stacy, he has to venture off of his line. Great Lapsovich gonna try the bottom. It's further back, JP Bergeron working the outside lane on Andrew Ranger in the 27. Roland Rousseau, number one in the Ford Fusion body style, working the high groove, as is your race leader, the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Stuart Friesen has joined the fray there right behind Creighton Lapsovich and Mark Antoine Cameron as they still race two, three wide. Jake Sheridan to the inside of Ken Schrader. You say Stuart Friesen has joined the fray. So is everybody else, really. And that's what's the beauty of this event is there's so many comers and goers. Is the track changes just a little bit and your line is no longer the fast line. And time flies, Dave. Without any yellows, we are already almost at the end of the second segment, which will be the final break. The final opportunity for any of these drivers to go and make adjustments. They're nearly three wide for the lead as Stuart Friesen had a look to the middle. Trayton Lapsovich trying on the bottom. Lapsovich dives it hard down low, and there's a car around. He had to abort the maneuver for the lead. This will be a caution. It's the 66 of Wallace Stacy who goes for a spin to the inside. Doesn't look like any damage. And we didn't see that either, Dave. That was unbelievable. He, he parked there in the middle of three and four, right at the very bottom of the screen, dead center. And there he goes spinning around. A few cars just narrowly avoiding the 66. There you can see Wallace go around. Oh, it gets pretty tight in a hurry when there's a car sitting crossways. None of the lights shining on the fence posts of the racetrack. That means we're about to go back to green. Once the green comes out, 
The whole fence lights up green just like it does when they go yellow or red. Quite a feature here, Dave. Yeah, you can't say you didn't see the green flag come out because it's hard to miss. As there goes those fence posts turn green and the field scatters once again. Great opportunity for those drivers, though, to always be on top of things. A great safety innovation as Trayton Lapsovich sneaks out in front of Cameron. Mark Antoine Cameron not going to let him get the top. And quick, quick, number 20 tries to push the 96 up to the outside. He'll lead at the line, new race leader, and it's the 20 of young Trayton Lapsovich. Cameron right on his tire tracks there. He goes a little bit higher off of turn number two, but Lapsovich out in front. Opens up a car length gap over the 96. Gotta wonder how much eye racing Trayton Lapsovich has done on dirt in the last few weeks to get ready for today's event. Not a guy who has cut his racing teeth on dirt. He's an asphalt guy, but here he's excelling Clear today. Back by one. Clear back by two. Nice and smooth. Hit your mark. Clear back two. Kanku two. Given the motivation to Trayton Lapsovich that he's doing things right. Oh no! DJ Kennington up off the banking, losing a couple of spots. He gets back on the racetrack and back into the throttle, but a couple of valuable positions just shy of the next segment break. And if you're a fan of dirt track racing, you'll notice that this track does not have a cushion as you would see at other places. Essentially a pile of dirt that you can put the right rear up against and try and help you around the track. This track tonight does not have one of those, so if you get it wrong, you're going up over the lip. Yeah, there's nothing to catch the car. Like you say, the cushion, they almost lean their right rear tire on it and get bite from it. You don't have that here at the Big O. You just get off the banking and go for a long slide. And loose spots, as DJ Kennington found out. Caution is now out, and this will be the halfway break on lap 54 of 100. So once again, an opportunity for the crews to call their drivers in, make any changes if necessary. They can make it the full distance on fuel, so they don't have to stop if they don't want to. No, well, that's exactly what I was going to say, Dave, but this enormous crowd at us weekend getting treated to some amazing racing. Well, it has been a unique event for sure. And the drivers starting to get a feel of this place and starting to build confidence, getting set for the second half of the Pinty's 100. But an opportunity for the drivers to take advantage of pit road. Ranger is in. What on earth? Jeff Wilcox was just at the back of the car with that garbage pail, but I'm not sure what he was up to. We'll find out after this. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. We're in the 10th race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season. Just when we think we've seen it all, Dave, that was an unusual pit stop for Andrew Ranger. Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene. Well, guys, we're here in the pits. We got Caden Lapsovich. Caden, what's the story? That was a very unorthodox pit stop. Did we see you pour dirt in the back for rear ballast? Yeah, we're just trying to get some rear weight in it right now. And the, what I know is that rear weight on dirt means grip. So fuel's burning off, so we'll manipulate that with dirt. So we got to try something. We're, we're kind of hit and miss where we're at right now. So we got to keep, keep trying to march forward right now. There you have it for the 27 crew. They are trying some wild things here tonight, guys. According to the rules, you can't add fuel during this race or put on tires unless you have a flat tire. They didn't say anything about adding dirt. Dave. Gotta love the thinking outside the box as we go back to green and Trayton Lapsovich, like he's shot out of a shotgun, back out in front in that high groove. You can see the level of aggression starting to ramp up. Mark Antoine Cameron trying to squeeze up in front of Jake Sheridan. Sheridan had to bite the brakes there a little bit to give Cameron room. And look at them fan out coming off of turn four. And Lassard, though, in the H on the inside trying to make a run down low. He's been one driver not afraid to try and work that inside groove. Look at how calm the body of Stuart Fries and his very slow, subtle movements on the gas, on the steering wheel. The cars gravitate to the top, but look at that line they're running coming off the turn. Looks like they found some bite down low in turn number four. How about Jake Sheridan? He's a driver turning some heads here today. Very comfortable inside this Leland number 64 as he sits in third spot chasing Mark Antoine Cameron, your early leader. And look at Cameron go way up the hill. 
but Cameron is where he would have been most of the race. These drivers are just now starting to venture that low on the racetrack on corner exit, and really only in turn four, although Sheridan's going to try it in turn two. Gaggle of race cars now down the back straight away. That's Ken Schrader on the inside. Kevin Lacroix in the Napa Auto Parts, number 74 in the middle. And the new Techwood Dodge, the number 59 of Gary Clute. Don't count out the St. Hubert Viagra, number 18 of Alex Tagliani. We haven't talked about Alex Tagliani very much at all here tonight, but he's right there in the hunt. And as this final stage unfolds, now we're down to a Saturday night special. It's 40 laps to go, so every corner matters, every move matters, Dave. Listen to Ken Schrader massaging that throttle in the EHR number three. APC Auto Parts centers behind that effort for Ken Schrader and Stuart Friesen right behind Mark Antoine Cameron into the 96. He'll take a look to the inside, but not all the way on the bottom. He's staying fairly close to the rear quarter panel of Cameron. Contact between Clute and Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix goes around. Big 360, you saw the one of J.P. Bergeron also go around. No caution yet as Lacroix managed to keep it running and stay in, and Bergeron couldn't do the same, so caution flag flies. Wow, it was not significant contact, but these cars are so on edge, it doesn't take much. Let's have a look and see this again. Nothing Ken Schrader hasn't seen before, just another day in the office. And it was just contact in the wrong spot, and there you can see the one go around as well. Bergeron stalled the car as the 74 kept it fired up and managed to keep going. So Bergeron goes to the back. The 74 will maintain his position. And he maintains position where he fell in line. He was ahead of Tagliani before that incident and Larry Jackson, but where he fell back in line was behind them. That's where he'll restart this race. Look at Rafael Lazard to the bottom. wide and Sheridan caught the wall contact with Cameron in the 96 as everybody pinched up to the backstretch wall we ride on board with DJ Kennington looking for a bit of racing room thankful he's not in the row behind him where they're three wide he's got his own little piece of real estate it's hard to figure out where you want to watch because there's so much dicing and there goes Sheridan bouncing off the wall again down the back straightaway trouble keeping that car down that's what the wall's there for <laughs> I tell me you haven't done that on NASCAR video games. Just keep, keep Ham it gassed up. Hammer down along the wall. They figured out that cheat. Looks like no damage really to that Leland number 64 as he maintains his speed. Look, there is a little damage to the number eight of Raphael Lazard as he battles with the 18 of Alex Tagliani. That's got to be a piece of someone else's race car hanging off the left rear. Whoa! A 360 on the front shoot. He avoids the wall. Caution but will fly. There's something going on behind. What is up down there? I believe J.P. Bergeron just had a hard hit in that Russo number one. Aaron Turkey involved. You see the 71 of Brian Cathcart. Michael, Michael Gowdy. Gowdy. Yeah. And Gowdy was doing a nice job tonight. We haven't talked about him very much, but he's keeping his nose clean. Oh, boy. Yeah. Look at the trail behind him, too, as Bergeron has significant damage. Have a look. You'll see the 18 spin, but what happens behind? Okay, one car coming across the racetrack. Ooh. There was two accidents at the same time there. Yeah, so Gowdy and Turkey started to spin separate of each other. Ooh. Oh, hard impact on the 99 of Aaron Turkey. So there you can see Gowdy go to the inside. There's Turkey and there's the impact as the 18 of Alex Tagliani does his best ballet impression here on the front straightaway. Synchronized spinning around the racetrack and that is a lot of fluid coming out of the one of J.P. Bergeron. This will take a bit of cleanup here at Ush Weekend Speedway. A big hit there for J.P. Bergeron in the prolon number one. Getting unloaded off the flatbed, but big damage for that driver. Otherwise, everybody who started this race is still out here in it. 
and they're pretty much all on the lead lap still, Dave. We should say for Bergeron, he will be back at Circuit Icar the next event. His teammate for that one will be former NASCAR Pinty Series champion Alex LeBay. LeBay spotted for him at Trois-Rivières. He's going to be behind the wheel when we go to Icar, but we've got a lot of racing still to come here. Look at that. Under 25 laps to go now as the leaders cross the stripe. The 20 of Trayton Lapsovich continues to lead his teammate, Stuart Friesen, and it seems like Friesen is just sizing him up at this point. I would say Friesen using air quotes because <laughs> they're only teammate in the fact that the two cars have numbers that come from Scott Steckley's shot. Yeah, there's, there's been no teammate play here. It's been every man for himself at the front of this field. Look at how close they get. That's about as most as much RPM as we've heard all night long. These drivers starting to get into it and really lean on those general tires, trying to find speed. There's Dave Bailey right up there behind Mark Antoine Cameron and DJ Cannington. And we should talk about the tires on these cars and a shout out to the Fairchild Race Tires for their work with General Tires and bringing these Grabber brand tires to the series here today and they again you mentioned they're a good tire they're holding up really well and they're holding up too well there's no rubber coming <laughs> off of them but we don't have to worry about tire wear it's all about race craft and who can figure this place out right now Trayton Lapsom is doing a great job but like you say so is Stuart Friesen he has driven a lot of different lines on this racetrack here tonight right on board the Leland 64 of Jake Sheridan. He has the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Interesting. Cameron led laps early in this race. He's led laps in seven out of ten races so far this year. That's a stat courtesy of Statsman extraordinaire Bryce Turner. He's been lightning fast everywhere we've gone. Another driver who's on the move, Andrew Ranger in the 27. Remember, he's got that unusual ballast <laughs> in the back of the trunk but it seems to be getting them a little bit of that rear bite they were looking for. I wonder if there's going to be a Ranger rule built into the rule book for this race next year. I'm not sure how you would even word that, but we'll leave that to the higher-ups at NASCAR. And we'll, we'll focus on the action. Alex Tagliani continues to work his way towards the front. It's been a slow march, but he's been quick all night. There you can see Schrader now in a battle with the number 84 of Larry Jackson. Jackson's comfortably been running that outside lane. Schrader's trying to work the low, low end of things. Larry Jackson's been a busy guy. Three cars in action here tonight. The 99 of Aaron Turkey, the four of Trevor Monaghan, which we really haven't seen much of, and of course his own 84 machine. Battle for fifth now as Tagliani moves to the inside of the super clean number 17 of DJ Cannington. Another driver we haven't really talked about much here today is the 71 of Ryan Cathcart. He has a Canadian motorsport legend in his pit helping him out here today. Peter Gibbons, I heard, was roaming the pit area. It's amazing. A unfamiliar but familiar face. Uh, it hasn't been around Canadian stock car racing in many years, of course, is now living in North Carolina. But great to see him back. I'll tell you, another driver we haven't talked about is just behind this pack. It's Sam Fellows in the 98. He's looked pretty sporty out there. He hasn't gotten in the middle of the fray, but we've got a yellow. Mike Gowdy in the 38 goes around. We've got nine laps remaining here at our weekend. Welcome back to the 10th race of the NASCAR Pinty's Series season. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey is trackside as we get set to go back to green. It is Lapsovich and Friesian again. Go there, go there. Corner, 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 door, door, inside, inside. It's not good news for Trayton Lapsovich having to tell him Stuart Friesen's getting closer and closer. But that's the information the driver needs as they battle side by side. And you see Cameron managed to work around the 64 of Jake Sheridan. And looming down low is the Fast Eddie Speedwear number eight of 
Raphael Lassard, he's trying to make that car work. Lassard has worked his way forward, has worked his way backwards, now trying to work his way forward as laps wind down. Six laps to go, and look at this battle at the front. Look at the time between them, less than two tenths of a second at the line between Lapsovich and Friesen with Cameron now entering the chat in the 96. Everybody racing under what we call a blanket. That's when they're fanned out, scrunched up like an accordion. Friesen still working the bottom of the racetrack. Mark Antoine Cameron looking for opportunity, nearly gets into the back of Friesen as he looks to the outside. Oh boy, now things are really picking up, but will Friesen use that bumper? He's been close a couple times, bounces it off the wall down the back straightaway to straighten that oh. car up. Look at this now. Jake Sheridan using up Mark Antoine Cameron. Payback will be swift. Cameron pushing him into turn one. Just trying to drive him out the end of the racetrack. Sheridan slows it up, gets around, and maintains position, holds third place. Look at Tagliani knocking on the back door of the 96. Tagliani is right there as they work into three and four. Sheridan with a good drive off the corner down the hill. He's got third place all on his own. Big wiggle from the 96 of Cameron as that allowed the 64 to open up a bit of a gap, but the top two now stretching away. Lapsovich, your leader, Friesen in second spot. Nothing to focus on for Lapsovich except hitting his marks. Oh no, Rafael Lassard loops it. In turn number four, Schrader catches a piece of the action. Yellow flag is thrown. So Lassard comes to a rest in turn number four. Little bit of damage to the nose of the three, but the easy clean number eight gets the worst of it. As that pressure washer will be needed after today's event. Right on board, Ken Schrader. Where do you go? It's a split second decision. Schrader chose to go to the inside. Clinton, Jeffrey, what's going on? We got Kyle Steckley here. Kyle, you know, crew chief for Stu Freeze and your teammates leaving though, you guys are running second. Does he have anything for trade? Yeah, we'll see here on this restart. He's been running good all day, just running around the top four and We'll see if he can make something happen on this restart and put the Mr. Transmission number 22 in victory lane. Has there been any talk about team orders or staying off each other? Uh, we're going to keep it clean, but we came here to win, so we're going to do whatever we can to do that. Right on. You hear from Kyle Steckley, crew chief for Stuart Friesen. I told you what a Kyle Steckley fan I am. He's got all of the skills his dad did, plus he can work a microphone too. And he never said that there is team orders, so this is going to be duked out to the end. A green-white checkered now to the finish here in the Pinty's 100, Lapsovich. Contact between Friesen and Lapsovich in turn number two. Stewart pulls up alongside the number 20. Side by side through three and four. Friesen down low, Lapsovich up high. Look at Friesen drift up and try and hold that number 20 car up to the outside, the extreme outside. Friesen trying to dictate the line as they work down the back straightaway. Stewart Friesen is eggs out in front. Ken Caduce has crossed him over. Lapsovich to the inside, they're rubbing in turn number four. Friesen into the corner of Lapsovich, holy moly. Straight Lapsovich with the win. Nice drive, way to work, good job. I love you guys, let's go! Huge congratulations from the 20 team as young Trayton Lapsovich holds off a hard charging Stuart Friesen who has a flat left run tire. We'll be back to talk to them in victory lane. We're still trying to catch our breath in the booth here as the fireworks exploding overhead after some minor fireworks on the track to settle the Pinty's 100. But Trayton Lapsovich with 25,000 reasons to smile. It was hard racing, but it was clean racing. Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene giving Trayton his moment. Well, Trayton, what a drive here today on the dirt. Your teammate gave you all you could handle. At the end, uh, you guys were trying not to wreck each other, but what a finish here. Talk about it. I mean, it's just so much fun coming here on dirt, Ashley, and Speedway. Uh, First of all, I gotta give a big thanks to my crew at uh, 22 Racing. Uh, the FBM Quick Quick RGC Sports number 20 was hooked up all weekend. You know, they gave me a great car, and uh, you know, when it came down to it, uh, we were out front. So, great weekend overall. Awesome job. Trayton Lapswich wins the first ever NASCAR race on dirt in Canada. <laughs> big hug from his dad there in victory lane. The rest of the family jumping in as well.
as we take a look at the finishing order here today. You see Cameron fourth. Ranger came back for seven. Yeah, Brandon Watson. We didn't talk about him much, but a solid top 10 finish here tonight. And then you see some familiar faces. Kevin Lacroix in 11th spot. Dexter Stacy, Brian Cathcart, 16th and 17th. Michael Gowdy with the top 20. Let's go back to Clint. Well, Stu Friesen, second on your debut here on the NASCAR Pinty Series on dirt. Not a bad run, Stu. You were in this race. Teammate, a little bit rough and going on, but uh, what's your thoughts? Yeah, no, it was all good. I mean, um, I just knew I could, I could, if I could control his exit a little bit, hold him up a little higher than he wanted to be, I could kind of squeeze ahead, and it, it worked out. And then, uh, you know, it got the gloves fell off there on the last lap, or they they got thrown off. So, um, all good. And I'm 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 super happy to be here. Uh, big thanks to Mr. Transmission, Quick Wick, uh, Team 22 for the opportunity to do this. Hopefully, we can do a little bit more of this uh, this Pinty stuff in the future. Uh, congrats to Trayton. He ran a great race. He he put his car right where he needed to be, and. Um, he was able to capitalize at the end. So um, I'm not disappointed. It's, it, was, it was a lot of fun here. Uh, awesome to be on the dirt. Awesome to have a, have a cool finish. Wish we would have we would have won it. But um, like I said, good day for Team 22. And uh, hopefully being back again, do it again someday. Really good day for Team 22 racing because Trayton Lapsovic stands atop the winner's podium. Look at the size of the trophy in victory lane. An impressive night, an amazing night here at Osh Weekend. We have a tie in the points battle. Cameron and DJ Kennington leave here with the lead. Tagliani and Lapsovich in a tie for third as well. Three races left on the 2022 schedule. There's still multiple drivers with a shot at the title, but let's talk about that third place finish. You see him on the left, Jake Sheridan. Welcome to the NASCAR Pinty Series. And welcome to the podium as well. This race came exactly as advertised. Action all night long started with that four wide salute. And I don't think they ever stopped running four wide. It seemed like there was a lot of it. And how about the biggest payday in the history of the series? Going to Trayton Lapsovich. $25,000 from all of us at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you next time at Circuit iCar. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.